Chris, once again, the Soviets are very well represented here in Hull. They've got three extremely strong teams here, led by the former 1990 Junior World Champions, Anasina and Averbach, who, with a change of coach, are looking to regain that title. Barb, despite that, the Canadians feel that they can win a medal here. Yes, we have two very promising teams here representing us in Martine Michaud and Sylvain Leclerc, who are making their Junior Worlds debut, as well, Emily Dion and Alexandra Alain, who were placed eighth last year at the Junior Worlds and are hoping for a medal this year. As we've seen before, it's very important to get off to a good start in dance, and we begin with the first compulsory dance and the 1990 World Junior Champions, Marina Anasina and Ilya Aberbach. In the Rocker Foxtrot, the judges are looking for very soft, lilting knees and crisp, deeply skated edges, as well as with all compulsories, timing is very important. and we will later see the quick step. And remember that each team skates the exact same pattern, and that's why you can see those patterns of the other skaters on the ice. And the Soviet couple posted the highest score for the Rocker Foxtrot. In third place, heading to the second compulsory Emily dance, Dion, here's the Canadian Alexandre couple, Alain, Emily Dion and Alexandra Alain, Canada. and their version of the quick step. Well, this dance is called the quick step because of the quick, short, precise edges as opposed to the long and deep edges of the rocker foxtrot. important things the judges are looking for in this dance is as little movement as possible between the two skaters. And here, Alexander and Emily are doing a very fine job of keeping the movement between the two of them down to an absolute minimum. dances the Canadian couple was in third place while Anasina and Aberbach were the leaders heading to the original dance and right behind the 1990 junior world gold medalists their Soviet teammates Necheva and Chesnachenko Dion and Alain were third in both the Foxtrot and Quick Step but a great day Alexandre Alain du Canada Two years ago, Marie-France Dubray and Bruno Ibarra of Canada won a bronze medal in the dance competition at the World Juniors, and in third place, after two compulsory dances, another Canadian pair, Emily Dion and Alexandra Allen. Well, here we're looking at the original dance portion of the competition. It's worth 30% of their total marks, and the prescribed rhythm this year is the polka. And one of the very few restrictions that are presented to these skaters in this element of the competition is that it must be a completely original version of what they think a polka is. And they can use the entire ice surface as opposed to the old OSP or original set pattern, which was a prescribed dance which had specific boundaries in which they had to execute the dance.
it's, it's a boisterous and, and a happy feeling dance. And I think a big part of it is the presentation of it. They really need to know how to perform the dance. With Emil and Alexandra, they are making their second appearance here at the Junior World Championships. And I think in the dance event, and more than any other, it's the maturity and the confidence that these skaters show that's going to separate those from who are going to stand on the podium from those who are just not going to be in contention here. Prior to displaying the marks for any part of an event, the referee and assistant referee ask the judges their marks. In the original dance, the first set of marks are the marks for composition. They reflect the originality and the difficulty of the steps, whereas the presentation marks reflect the timing and the interpretation of the dance. <laughs> to the World Juniors, their first was an eighth place finish, and the first set of marks for Emily Dion and Alexandra Alain, the marks ranging from 5-2 to a 5-4 from the American judge. in third place and vying for a medal. The Soviets are one and two. And here are the presentation marks and they're a bit higher up to 5-5 five, five from the Austrian judge. So Emily Dion and Alexandra Lang in the original dance with two sets of good marks. Five, four, five, four. Here's the second Canadian couple, Martine Michaud and Sylvain Leclerc of Laval. Sixth after the first compulsory dance, fifth after the second. And like so many of the skaters here, this is their first international competition. And for them, it's gonna be a big thrill to skate in front of a hometown crowd. And you can only expect and hope that things will go well for them and they can build on this experience. junior level this is their first junior competition they seem very very comfortable out there on the ice and uh, you would never know that they've never ever competed at a junior level performance Barb and I think with Canadian dancers both sitting in the top 10 there's their coach Louis Nadeau looking pleased I think we should be pleased that we've got such depth at the junior level in dancing this year it's interesting you commented earlier Barb on their maturity and you're right for a junior team they've really done a fine job here showing 
I think something that all skaters strive for. Sometimes it takes a little longer for others, but this team certainly is showing the potential of being uh, a serious contender in the future. Well, we know what it's like to perform for the first time at an international level. And it, it, it really is nerve-wracking. Um, these kids were here to, to gain information, to learn, to experience. And uh, they, lo they looked like they were having a great time out there. You wonder if skating at home has been a big advantage for them. There's certainly all of the Canadian skaters so far have used it as an advantage. These two have been skating together for three years. And here come the first set of marks for composition. And you see the 5-3 from the American judge. scores second place mark so far for Michaud and LeClaire of Canada behind their teammates Dion and Alain. From the Soviet Union. In second place after the compulsory dances from the Soviet Union, Yaroslava Necheva and Yuri Chesnichenko from Moscow. teams interpret a polka, but it should be interesting to see how a Soviet interprets a polka dance. I think this team is a nice example of why the Soviets are always contenders in the dance event. They have an intricacy of steps that's highly difficult, technically difficult, and yet maintain very nice flow and speed across the ice. But they also at all times know where the other skater is, where some of the younger pairs are, are sometimes fighting for position. They're always in the right position at the right time. Again, Barbara, it's always impressive the way the Soviets come to a competition prepared to compete. They skated strongly. I think it was a good dance, and it'll be interesting to see what the judges score it. Well, I think this is probably the most difficult polka that we'll see here this afternoon. Here's a look at some of the intricacies. They had a lot of turns, a lot of very difficult steps over top of each other. Under pressure, these steps are very difficult to perform, as we know. The more nervous you get, the more easy it is to trip. And with all these intricate turns, it's very easy to hit a toe. Paul, you mentioned the Soviet domination. They've won 14 consecutive World Junior Gold Medals. And here come the marks for Necheva and Chesnichenko. And they're the best marks we've seen so far. 5-2 from the Canadian judge. 2-5-6. From the Austrian judge. Currently 
in second place behind Anna Cena and Aberbuck, their teammates, and there are the presentation marks. The Austrian judge giving them the highest mark at 5-7, but those are first place marks from eight of the nine judges so far. Marina Anisina, Ilya Averbu, the Union Soviétique from the Soviet Union. Here are the leaders after the two compulsory dances, the 1990 World Junior Champions, Marina Anisina and Ilya Averbuk. Last year, they were fourth, so they're trying to regain the championship they won two years ago. Well, I'll be quite interested to see how this performance goes for this couple because earlier today in practice, they did not exactly have a good practice. They were having some trouble with some steps. She was having difficulty, actually hit the boards once during the practice. So let's sit back and watch and see how they do. steps yet at the same time they're maintaining excellent speed across the ice with good flow and excellent ice coverage well paul to reflect the style the character of a polka there really are only so many steps you can do like you see right now lots of heel toe steps and in certain positions arm positions and it's interesting that really this dance is is, is a lot up to the choreographer because they, it's up to the choreographer to to give them originality to be different than all the rest of them. And because there are only a certain number of steps that they will be able to execute to give it a polka feel, the challenge is in the judges panel in deciding which of these teams best utilizes those steps and comes up with the best original dance and market accordingly. Well, certainly their practice of earlier today was not a good indication of how they were going to perform here in the competition. I thought they did an excellent job, showed excellent presence on the ice, and looked like a team that could certainly regain the title here. Here's a look at some of those intricate steps. Turns under the arm. Lots of hops. And the story behind them is that after last year's fourth place finish, following their championship win the previous year, that they felt that a coaching change was in order. And as a result, they're now taking from Natalia Linenchuk, who is one of the former top Russian ice dancers and now a coach who has had, I believe, the previous three or perhaps four world junior champions. And here they are with their coach, Natalia Linenchuk. And as you mentioned earlier, it is so important, at least at the ice dance level, because choreography is everything. And you have to have a coach and a choreographer that can give you the material to go out there and, and show the world what you can really do. They were first after the compulsory dances. Barb, you mentioned originality. We saw three different focus from the three different Soviet couples. And there are the first set of marks for composition for Anna Sina and Averbok. And those are the best marks we have seen so far. Well, I think they certainly reflect the difficulty and intricacy of the step that this couple showed in their version of the polka. And I, th I think the, the marks for the presentation definitely will come up a little bit. And there they are, up to 5 8 from the Czechoslovakian, the Italian judge, and a 5 9 from the Austrian judge. So Anna Sina and Aberbach maintain their first place position ahead of Necheva and Chesnachenko of the Soviet Union. Dion and the land of Canada are third. 
The Soviets are traditionally strong in dance, and they finish one, two, and four, but a strong performance from the Canadians as well. In the last 14 years, Soviets have won 14 golds, 10 silver, and three bronze in the dance competition. Two years ago, the golds went to Anasina and Averbach. Last year, they slipped to fourth place, but going into their free program, they're back on top, skating for another gold medal. Chris, you mentioned the depth that the Soviet Union has in ice dancing. And going over the record of this event since its inception, I'm surprised at the number of skaters who have appeared here, won the event, and yet have never made an appearance at the Senior World Competition. different character, different speed of music. And I think it's something that in a junior team you don't see very often, and I think it could mean the difference between those teams that place off the podium and this team, which I think which is going to stay at the top of the podium. Well, I really noticed that the program started a little slow, and it gradually built and built towards the climax at the end. No doubt having appeared here at two previous Junior World Championships has been a big asset to this team, and I think the maturity they show is a direct result of that experience. One of the things the judges are looking for is quality of skating, difficulty of steps, and I think this replay shows you that they've got a fairly good control of that aspect of free dancing. They did have a couple of small trips and it looked almost as though the ner her nerves were getting to her. We saw her in practice the other day, and she was having a really tough time. She actually hit the, there we go. She actually hit the boards a couple of times, and I think that she does have a, a, a problem with her nerves. It'll be interesting to see how the judges handle that because we haven't seen any change of order so far in this dance competition. They've led all the way. There's Natalia Linichek, the coach, and the first set of marks for technical merit. Consistent across the board, up to a 5-8 from the German judge. Those are the highest marks we have seen so far. All first place marks, but their main contenders will follow. 
And the artistic impression marks even higher up to those four, five, eights for the leaders, Anasina and Aberbach of the Soviet Union. Yaroslava Necheva, Yuri Chesnichenko. This couple has an outside chance of catching Anasina and Aberbach for the gold. Yaroslava Necheva, Yuri Chesnichenko from Moscow, both 18 years of age. They've been second through the compulsory dances and the original dance. Well, the results tend not to change very often after the free dance, but if anybody's about to catch the first place team, I think it will be this team. of this program, I must say that it's my opinion that this team compared to Asini and Aberbrook do not have the intricacy of footwork nor the ease of transitions as they change position relative to each other and I think the marks are probably going to reflect that difference. I just don't think these two programs are comparable. I think the previous one was certainly superior. but I think it's a direct result of the fact that the steps are not nearly as intricate or complicated. It just never ceases to amaze me the depth that the Soviet Union has in this particular discipline. As I was watching this team, I was really reminded of Klimova and Ponomarenko, former world champions. The crowd really seems to like this team. You know, sometimes the dance competition you should judge with the applause meter and uh, they seem to get the louder ovation from the fans here. But they certainly are a striking couple on the ice. They create a, a look and they have a, an appearance that certainly is attractive to the eye. Of course, there's many dance aficionados here that's not very far away from the Duchenne's hometown of Aylmer, where they hone their skills. Well, we mentioned that Anasina and Aberbuck had first place marks right across the board, but there was room for Necheva and Chesnachenko. Here come the technical merit marks. 5-8 from the German judge. And he has them ranked ahead of Anasina and Aberbuck. Marks for artistic impression. These 
to the key marks now. 5-9 from the German judge. But the eight other judges have Nacheva and Chesnachenko ranked second. So Anasina and Aberbach continue to lead. for Martine Michaud and Sylvain Leclerc. They hope to finish in the top 10 here in their first international competition. And they will start the free skate in fifth place. Sylvain and Martine were, were commenting to me today about their practice this morning. They practiced with the Soviets as the top five teams practiced together this morning. They said the practice was very intense. And even at one point, the Soviets came around the corner and he, he ended up with an elbow in the jaw. interesting that the Soviets have given us performances which one would regard as much more traditional in terms of costume and selection of music. Martina and Selvin, on the other hand, have used what I would describe as a little bit more new wave music, a little bit more free-flowing, a little bit more abstract. And it's one of the interesting things about ice dancing, that the same competitors in the same event can use so strikingly different music and choreography. flies flying in the stands they must certainly feel as though they've had a nice skate out here tonight things apparently went well for them and it'll be interesting to see how they fare against the balance of the top five here in this competition well i really like the free dance i thought that it really built throughout the program towards the end of the program i thought they performed it really really well and you have to remember this is the first time this team has competed at an international level and they're sitting in fifth place which is really incredible Barb, as a contrast of experience, they had completed one year together when Anna Cena and Averbuck won their first World Junior Golds. <laughs> set of marks 
start with the 4-9 and work their way up to three 5.3s. And it looks like those marks will keep them behind the two Soviets, but uh, they're not going to lose any ground with marks like that either. And the second set of marks even higher. So right now, Michaud and Leclerc of Canada are in third. And it appears that they will finish at least as high as fifth place. And that's terrific for their first international competition. Well, it should be no surprise that there are three Soviet couples in the top five. This is Elena Grishina and Rushan Goncharov. They're from Odessa. Elena, 16 years of age. Rushan's 18. And they currently stand in fourth place. about just where the sport is going. It appears as though at the past few senior world events there's been some program or a number of programs that have been highly criticized as to whether or not they really are ice dancing. Here at the junior event, I'm surprised. It appears as though none of these teams are following that controversial lead. All of these free dances have been more in what we would consider the traditional free dance vein. And I'm wondering if these skaters are the ones who have heard those criticisms and really don't want to be part of that. Emotion. I just didn't feel as though they captured this audience in any way, shape, or form. And as a result, it was well skated, but lackluster. We often underestimate when watching these performances how important the music is. It's so often that a music can make or break a skater's event depending upon what he has selected for his particular This is the couple that will challenge Emily Dion and Alexandra Alain for a medal in fourth place and there are the marks. The low is from the Canadian judge of 4.7 up to a 5.4 from the German judge. And so 
Rashina and Goncharov appear to be set to move ahead of Michaud and Leclerc of Canada. We'll wait for the second set of marks, and there they are. So Rashina and Goncharov have moved ahead of the Canadian couple in the third place. So right now, the Soviets stand one, two, and three. But there's still a Canadian couple to come. for Emily Dion and Alexandra Alain. They come into the free skate in third place, seeking Canada's seventh medal in World Junior Dance Competition. I don't think they ever relaxed out there through that entire program. And for an ice dancer, that's not good. Ice dancers rely heavily on nice, limber, flexible knees. And when those knees aren't working for an ice dancer, they're in trouble. I don't know, but during the course of that performance, I counted two or three times where I thought they were almost into the boards. Whether they lost their parameters out there or just the nerves got to them, it's hard to tell. Well, they described their free dance today as a traditional approach to a modern dance and it was to very futuristic music and i felt with the futuristic music it's very tough to bring emotion into that type of music her face really lacked emotion throughout the, the performance unfortunately well, the big question can they hang on to third and get a medal there are the first set of marks and they look pretty good from the Hungarian and German judges. Marie France 
Dubre and Bruno Ivar two years ago won a bronze medal for Canada in this competition. And it all comes down to this next set of marks. And here they are. They have a second place mark from the Canadians and a string of third place marks. So they will finish third. And it's a bronze medal for Canada. And for Emily Dion and Alexandra Allen. The comeback is complete for Anasina and Aberbach as they win the gold medal. Soviets also second. After an eighth place finish last year, Dion and Alain move up five spots for the bronze. But at the beginning of the year, we were expected to be in the top five. But two months ago, we decided to be in the top three. Emily, you're not too far away from where the Duchenneys grew up and uh, became such great skaters. Uh, uh, were they influential in your career at all? Uh, sure, but because uh, they are very um, <laughs> innovator. Innovator, and we like that. What's next? What's next? Uh, next is the uh, division, and after the Canadian for for this year, and uh, we we'll go year after year. So uh, good luck and congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you.